right, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. Uh, it is time to get this uh, party started. So we have to do a quick. We have the ECB. Uh, this uh, what well, we have the rate decision here in just a couple of minutes. Um, obviously, we'll have to stop for that. There, there's there's not going to be any changes in monetary policy. So uh, it's more of the more of the press conference that's going to be the mover if there's going to be a mover. But like I said, it's going to probably just be a lot of volatility. So here's what I've got with the euro. Um, let's uh, delete this and 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 I'm, I'll just say again what I uh, said earlier regarding the euro. And and I have no exposure in the euro dollar. I am short the euro pound right at current levels. So it's not um, you know it's, I can actually go into that chart a little bit later too. But regarding the euro dollar itself, we have had staged a really nice recovery back to the basically the 618 retracement and also previous support, which is current resistance. And as you can see, that is um, that's really what's weighing on us today. And uh, even if we get a brief new high, okay, you have to be on the lookout that the 618 retracement is just above. 12 level at 112.20. So I personally could, f I feel that any rally that breaches new highs could actually still stall, you know, just enough. This market is that type of market where we get a lot of false breakouts, we get a lot, a lot of false breakdowns. Um, so even if we breach these new highs here, you have to be cognizant of that 618. So even if we do hit new highs, we could still fail up here. Now I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. I'm just saying that that is a possibility. That's why I, th I think instead of writing down resistance as being 122, really critical resistance today is 122.20. And frankly, as long as we're below, whoops, 112.20, I'm sorry. So as long as we're still below 112.20, I think the potential for a bearish um, uh, move is, is, is still likely. Now, if we can get a solid move above 112.20, I would I would imagine we're set to challenge those highs. Okay, if we can if we can get a daily close above here, like I said, I have no exposure in the euro in the euro in in the euro right now. Aside in the euro dollar. I do have exposure in the euro via the euro pound, but I have no exposure in the euro dollar. Now, I do also want to say one last thing. Yesterday's move was a very big one, huge. I mean, what we were up 250 pips yesterday, so it shouldn't surprise you that we're down, what, 40 pips right now, 30, 33 pips. That shouldn't surprise you at all that we're paring back some of those gains, especially ahead of a lot of key data points today. In the U.S., ADP, you got uh, you know um, ISM services are more important services number or more important ISM number later on this morning. So there's a lot of data coming out today, so it doesn't surprise me that we paired back some of those gains. Um, however, also a lot of those gains were contingent on Greece putting together a, 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 a some sort of solution with its creditors. Guys, that, that no, there, nothing's been done yet. They're negotiating. The market is very much a glass half full um, uh, market. So with that being said, if for some reason these negotiations fall apart, which from what I see, the creditors right now, are basically saying, hey, listen, the government that was established before the new government, Syriza, came into, to, 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 uh, into the majority, before Syriza came in, the previous government had agreed to certain terms. And if you're the creditor, the creditor is basically like, listen, we, we respect the fact that you're a new government but you're still Greece and your previous government had signed a specific set of terms that you're trying to renegotiate that we're not really willing to negotiate on. That's the problem. So no one wants to see Greece out of the Eurozone either. So, you know, the new government is coming with a very hard line attempt saying, look, we, we, we can't make these payments under these 
conditions. They're going to have to work with us, or, or we're going to have to default. They don't want them to default, but at the same time, the creditors, which would be the IMF, the EU, Trochia, you know, Germany, really at the helm, they're like, you already, you, you, you have to, you, you, you have to live up to the agreements that were signed to the previous government. And that's where it all, that's why the negotiations, although the market feels that there's going to be favorable, a favorable outcome for, 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 for Greece and, you know, but that's not guaranteed. What if, what if the negotiations fall apart? Whatever you got yesterday, the 200 pip gain, we'll lose that and then some, right? So don't, I, I think it's premature to believe that, quote unquote, Europe's fixed or Greece is fixed. You know, I, I don't like, I think using those terms is people use it too loosely, but still, I don't think Greece is fixed, so to speak. All right. So 112.20, big resistance. Support on the way back down. So let's, let's imagine that 618 holds and let's imagine that resistance holds. Well, then. We have a couple key support levels that come back down to. Obviously, the 110.50 level is big. I mean, we flew right through it yesterday, which I got stuck on the short side yesterday, as I explained to you guys earlier. Um, but that was such a critical, that's been such a critical, pivotal point for, for so many um, weeks now that that could come into play. But more importantly, I think it, it will just have to look at some Fib levels here from low to high. So the 38% retracements of 110.50. Um, below that is 110, which is a 50% uh, retracement, which is also the breakout point. So 110, 110.50, those are all supports for the euro should things unravel a bit or the US data comes in a lot stronger than had anticipated. Okay. Those are all supports for the euro dollar on the way back down. Again, if we get a sustained break above 112.20, I'll be the first one to believe that we're probably going higher. A, a flip side is, is if if some sort of um, you know deal gets done with Greece, and uh, and and some sort of um, you know uh, the 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 creditors and and Greece come to some sort of agreement, a lot of the buying has been done from yesterday. So the upside, you know, may be rather limited because the euro would pop, but at the same time. You know, people will take a step back and say, well, hey, you know, listen, it's still, Greece is not fixed. They may be able to stay in the Eurozone, but really the economy is still pretty weak. And, you know, ECB is still doing quantitative easing. The Fed's still looking to raise rates. So any longer term gains, they're, they're going to be fairly short lived. Any intermediate gains will probably be very short lived. Okay. I just want to make that point clear. Uh, again, I don't want to ignore this. I don't want to ignore that we might be developing some sort of flag pattern. So um, we have to be cognizant of what you see here. I think this possible flag pattern is, uh, is entirely possible. Uh, I don't want to ignore that. Okay, currently it probably looks something like that. If we do, uh, if we do stage a rally, because if we do stage a rally, post ECB, post ISM, post ADP, if the U.S. data comes in weak, that could propel us to 114, right? Very easily. So I don't want to write off a bullish scenario, and I definitely don't want to write off a bearish scenario at this point. All right, so there's the euro for now. Uh, and I think we've appropriately got our analysis on there. All right, let's go over to the cable. So I'm actually long the pound, not the pound dollar. I'm long the pound New Zealand and I'm short the Euro pound. So I am long the cable right now. Uh, you know, uh, on Monday, I picked up the cable basically 152. I sold it yesterday. As you guys are aware, I sold it at like 152.60. Uh, it was a really great trade off of the um, you know previous support, uh, uh, 
previous resistance, current support, also the 50% retracement is, uh, as you all know. So that trade was solid. Uh, I'm not long the pound dollar as it is right now, um, but I think as long as the cable remains above the 151.65, which is the breakout point from back here, as long as we remain above that, I think that the, there's there's a good chance for a continued rally. Now, I think we are capped though for right now at 154.40, which is also previous support level. Spike highs over here, which is also near a 38% retracement of this entire move down. So 154 to 154.30 is going to offer us some really great resistance. So I'm going to put in 154.30 as resistance. And um, right now we are range. Uh, range bound and support is going to be down here at 151.65. That is a key. 151.65. That is a key level support. And what what you'll notice is we are pretty much mid range. And it's a big day, guys. It, it's a big day um, for data. Uh, U.S. economic data with the with the ADP, with the ISM, with crude oil inventories. So what you what you're going to find is typically before a big piece of data, you know, here's you know the upper end of our range, here's the lower end of our range, we're smack dab in the middle, right? So it, from here, you know, any rally towards 154 is probably going to be a decent short. Any rally, any pullback to 151.65 is probably going to be a decent long. And I think you got to play the the cable as a range for right now. Okay? Let's go over to the Swissy. As you know, I'm very disenchanted with the, the dollar Swiss right now. Uh, I, I'm not excited about owning it. Uh, I'm not excited about shorting it. And really, the way I play the dollar Swiss is going to be dependent on what happens with Greece. If there is a favorable outcome to the Greece situation, uh, for Greece, and you know the the, the creditors uh, are able to make some concessions and make it possible for Greece to continue on in the eurozone and possibly uh, kick the can down the road or pay their debts. Um, uh, that, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, is. Um, is what's going to trigger for me to play the dollar Swiss to the long side or the Euro Swiss or just play the Swiss franc as a short. Okay. Now the flip side to that is if Greece and its creditors cannot come to some sort of resolution, the Swiss franc is more than likely going to rally short term. So you're going to see a fall in the dollar Swiss. You're going to see a fall in the Euro Swiss. You'll see a fall in the Swiss pound Swiss. The Swiss franc will rally. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm very disenchanted with this currency pair at the moment. I have no um, real bias at this point. Uh, let's uh, delete some, actually, you know what? Let's uh, right click, remove, okay. Currently, yeah, it's a four hour chart with the dollar Swiss. Currently, I think we gotta abide to, to this I think that's what we're dealing with right now. Um, unfortunately, it's not super exciting either. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting. Touching those those three uh, wicks right up there takes us right to the, the channel top. But anyway, I, I think this is what we're going to be doing. And um, the, I, there, there's not a whole lot to do here. And and like I said, I think it, the, the future of the dollar Swiss really lies upon what happens in Greece. Okay, really does. And uh, and I would say while we're below 
you know, 95 cents, the, the, it's, the upside's capped here, okay? So support, 93 cents, resistance, um, Well, I suspect 94 cents is probably going to offer some pretty good re pretty good, good resistance there. Let's see here. Ninety-four fourteen is a six way, so yeah, probably a rally back to uh, you know 94 cents. Did this happen? No, this is actually this is actually result of a move uh, of the uh, of some data releases okay um, so 93 and 94 cents and like I said I'm very very disenchanted with this currency pair uh, there's not anything I want to do with it I just want to leave it alone I know some of you guys will trade it but that, that for me it's just not worth it not not, not currently All right, um, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to move on over to one second. We're going to move on over to the dollar yen. All right, so the dollar yen. Now, I got asked earlier in the chat room uh, about the dollar yen. And what I think about it, and it's like, I really, really am looking forward to selling a move up to 125.75. That's if we get it. Now, if we have good economic data today that comes out of the U.S., you know, favorable. Uh, uh, oh, I just went. I know I just missed the uh, ECB rate decision, but nothing happens uh, th during the ECB rate decision. So, you know, obviously, the euro is not doing anything. Um, because we're actually waiting for the press conference. That's going to be the, the, the more important number. Um, the dollar yen, it, it, if we get a move up to 125.75, I'm selling it. I mean, if we get it, that's 161% extension. I'm going to be selling up there. Right now, the, the dollar yen doesn't look like it's backing off at all. I mean, the, the pullbacks have been very minimal. Okay. And um, I suspect that there's probably some more upside. I'm just looking to sell any significant rally if we can get it. And a significant rally to me is, is, is above 125. But for right now, we have, uh, let's go back out to the daily chart here. The reason why this 124 20 levels so important is you have to go all the way back to 2007. Previous highs 124.15 basically. We're holding above it ever so briefly or ever ever so uh, uh, barely just holding above it right now. But you can see it's really creating a lot of uh, a lot of selling up here. But if we can break above 125, it should break loose. Okay. 125 is resistance. Support will be the overnight support. You can see right through here, 12370, 123.70, oops, 125. Dollar Canadian, let's do that really quickly. Oops. So the dollar Canadian, we broke through support here. Now check this out. Okay, this is from yesterday, our analysis from yesterday. So we broke through support. And by the way, if you're a live market alert subscriber, yesterday, um, US dollar Canadian hourly looks oversold, but uptrend uh, snapped. Be careful with the dollar Canadian. It looks vulnerable for more downside. However, the near term, we could bounce 
since uh, so oversold. Rallies to 125 could be a good level to short. Uh, but let's watch crude carefully. A break above 61 would suggest that our Canadian is moving lower long term. However, um, what had uh, and that was from yesterday, by the way. That was yesterday, right here when I sent that out. Well, we were about 124, so we've bounced pretty good. But now, what we've done is we've bounced right to 124.65, which is previous support. You can see it right here. Okay, and now we have this downsloping trend line coming into play. So 124.60 is obviously resistance right now. Oops. 1.2460. And um, we were in this really strong uptrend in the dollar Canadian. We snapped that yesterday, so we're going to go from a bullish trend back over to range environment. Okay. But also, support now is going to be very strong on a move back down to 123.70. Okay. All right, what I'm going to do, guys, uh, since I got to take a break, uh, I, I got to go get some more coffee. When I come back, we're going to do the Kiwi, the Aussie, the dollar index, try to squeeze in maybe the peso, the Norwegian krona before ADP non farm. I'm going to take a few questions and then we're going to go right into the press conference, which the ECB press conference will be the that that's where if we're going to see any type of movement today, it's going to be there. All right, I'll be back in a few moments. You guys don't go anywhere. Thank you all for being here. If you're new to the Morning Edge, uh, we do follow basic protocol around here, so it's not some random webinar. We've uh, been broadcasting for 13 years. This is our 13th year. Uh, for the Morning Edge, it's a two-hour broadcast. I tend to do uh, half an hour segments or 25-minute segments, give you guys a five-minute break. Um, first part of the morning is a rant, second part of the morning, or first First uh, half an hour is a rant. Usually I just talk about whatever. Uh, second half an hour is usually analysis that we're going through right now on the majors. Uh, the third and fourth half an hour usually are news events. Uh, I wrap up with questions. I uh, cover a lot of cross rates. Today just is going to be a little busier than normal since we do have ADP non-farm. We have the ECB rate decision press conference, which although I'm not expecting a lot of massive direction directional movement I am expecting some uh, some some uh, activity so uh, with that being said uh, with that being said it, it won't be a day that I'm going to be able to address a lot of questions so I'm not ignoring anybody I tend to answer almost every question every day this today is not going to be one of those days all right I'll be back in a few moments I'm gonna go get some coffee don't go anywhere all right traders this is Blake Morrow you are listening to the morning edge webinar um, Sorry, I was just reading something. Um, okay, uh, so I want to welcome you all back. We got to really just kind of finish things up here. Let's uh, go over to the Kiwi. Let's see, New Zealand dollar, and uh, th this is my only dollar exposure right now is being short the Kiwi, and my cost average is basically right here. I I'm short at seventy one forty seven, so that's my cost average. Uh, as you guys might recall yesterday, this chart that I drew out, okay, and I said as long as we're below 72.10, we remain bearish, right? We went as high yesterday as 72, basically 71.99, okay? Previous support, it was a, it was a slight slope on that trend line. We came out of the, uh, the triangle rallied to 72 cents and we roll over since then. I've been establishing a short position since yesterday. Um, unfortunately, my timing wasn't all that great, but I still got, uh, you know, I, I still got a, a, you know, a, some decent prices. Um, I'm, I'm just, I wanted Kiwi short exposure anyway. So 
uh, this is the way to do it. But as long as we stay below 72.10 today, it remains bearish. 0.72.10. 10 remains bearish and uh, support right now comes in at this slight upsloping trend line here that, tr that support comes in at 7105 currently all right let's go to the Aussie Now the Aussie is up on um, you know stronger uh, GDP numbers. The GDP numbers, although stronger, wasn't as impressive as uh, as you, the 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 Australian economy it, itself was not strong. It was a good export numbers, which you know, the Aussies, the, the, look at the currency. I mean, it's been beat up quite a bit. So it's, you know, that that's that's good. The weaker currency is really helping the Australian economy. However, it doesn't mean that the, econ the, the, the economy itself internally is doing great. And that's, I think, what the GDP numbers really reflected. However, what we did do is we did rally back in the Aussie dollar. Uh, we held, uh, now, if you guys recall, the 618 retracement and the 38% retracement. It was a FIB confluence that came into play yesterday. And we talked about it pretty substantially as if we make a move to 78 cents, it's probably a decent short. I got asked in the chat room late yesterday evening, you know, we were near 78 cents and uh, I can't remember, I think it was Sanjeev that said, hey, you know, Blake, you know, should I be short in the Aussie here? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man, you know, because the Aussie New Zealand looks set to break out. You know, there's been some strength with the pound Aussie falling, I and the Euro Aussie falling. I, I just I, I wasn't comfortable shorting the the Aussie dollar. It, it's obviously it's pulled back a little bit, but still, to be short the Aussie, you might let those GDP numbers you know uh, make its way through the market for the next 24 hours or so before shorting the Aussie dollar. Personally, I think I, I think it it that these are this is a good price to be short. I just don't. I'm not comfortable shorting it just yet, especially in, if if the data that we get today is all U.S. dollar. You know, if if it's weak economic data, especially with the ADP here in 10 minutes, you know this this uh, this Aussie could break higher. All right, so resistance right now is uh, the high. So 78. Let's call it 78.20. It's key resistance today. 78.20, key resistance. We're um, in a range, remember we have a big, big, big um, um, megaphone pattern that we've been talking about ever since we were here. Okay, big megaphone pattern, played out really quite nicely and you know still has some downside, but obviously the GDP numbers and yesterday's price action really stalled the movement. See previous support, you know, still acting as current resistance. Now, what you'll notice here, let's go to the hourly. This breakout point is holding. Okay, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Uh, that. Okay, so this breakout point is holding pretty well, and that comes in at 77.50. So as long as we're above 77.50, it's being propped up. Oops. 77.50, okay. Dollar index. So the dollar index, very, very choppy, okay. So previous support, previous resistance, current support, all those wicks held, that comes in basically it's 95.80, so we can give it all the way down to 95.65 is support. 95.65 is support. Resistance, I mean, remember this this trend line has been a real big challenge for us. Um, you can see it, uh, I can actually can continue to zoom, whoops. 
you can see how important this trend line has been. Um, right here, through here, here, right there, right there, right there, and possibly right here. So possibly that, that has more to do with today than anything. So uh, as long as we're below 96, what is that, 55? Yeah, you know, there's a there's a good chance that we you know we're gonna we're gonna struggle while we're below 96.55, but we are in, in a range, um, and uh, so there's your dollar index. Oops, right through here. Okay, dollar index stalling here, supported here. Uh, we're kind of boxed in at the moment. Now, uh, let me see if I can really quick do uh, let's take a look at the peso. The reason why I have to pull up the peso is because, you know, the peso guys is really close to taking out these highs, and we'll be we'll be a multi-year highs, you know. So if we break fifteen sixty, it's gonna be very bullish. Um, what would break the 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 peso down is below. 1541 so I want to keep this on. I can't trade the peso as you guys know most of you know anyway uh, but for those of you that can 1560 if that breaks oops 1540 that's uh, support but 1560 if that breaks man this thing is going higher okay we're in a range for now but and it's getting close. Uh, Norwegian Krona, very choppy here. Let's go over to the Swedish Krona. Swedish Krona is actually on pretty key support right now. All right, not a whole lot to do with those though, the Nordic currencies. Okay, we have about five minutes before ADP non-farm. Let me see if I can take a couple of quick questions. Um, Let's see.